Thank you for joining me. Yes, absolutely. Can you please go ahead and introduce yourself? All right, my name is Namdi, and I have been an RN for 12 years now. In that uh, time frame, I've worked in the ER, I've worked uh, from taking care of pediatrics all the way to geriatric patients. I've also been in a position of a director of a clinical setting in the home health agency. Okay. So you have a lot of experience. You've worked in a variety of different settings, as you just said yourself. Obviously, you've been through the hiring process many times. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially, it's more specifically the nursing hiring process. So can you walk us through uh, what that's like? Let, let's let's tell us how you got your ER job and then we'll move on from there. Well, we're, right after um, graduating nursing school, at the time it was really difficult to get a job, I can remember that. But I started off working in home health the first six months. And then okay. quick, and during that time I was, I really wanted to get a hospital job because you know, you have to get, a, you have to start as a new nurse, you want a situation that exposes you to get in, work, learning your skills, of or practicing the skills and getting really good at it. Yeah. So I did what I could to get into a cardiac telemetry unit. And after spending some time at the cardiac telemetry unit, I then worked in the ER when the position opened up. I really enjoyed working in the ER. One of the main reasons why I enjoyed working in the ER was because of it allowed me to be exposed to different uh, patient conditions or patient illnesses, whether it's from chest pain to GI issues or uh, you know neuro neuro problems or whatever throughout that span. You, you working in the ER exposes you to all these patient types mm -hmm. and. That was part, and it was also fast paced. I really thrive really well in a fast paced environment. Right. Okay, given all of the different types of departments that you have worked in as a nurse, what would you say may have been the most competitive? I would say there's a lot of alpha type personalities in the ER. I okay. did work a little bit in uh, cardiothoracic ICU. The pace is a lot slower. You're dealing with really critical patients uh, that are either pre-heart surgery or post-heart surgery. I enjoy that working in the cardi cardiothoracic ICU because there's a lot of thinking involved. Mm -hmm. that is, there's Not that there isn't any thinking in the ER, but you're dealing with really critical issues in the ICU. In the ER, there's a lot of competition among workers. Co-nurses? Co-nurses. I wouldn't necessarily consider it, call it competition because I like challenges. So being in that environment only makes me want to be better at my practice. I find that's where you see a lot of that. Um, Is there like power clashes a lot? Um, nurse against doctor or you know nurse and admin people? It depends. It depends on the culture of that ER, uh, culture of the clinical setting. Now, there are some environments that, that foster collaboration and education and yeah. you find that people want to come help. There's your co-workers seem to want to learn. There's a lot of in-service. The managerial staff and admin staff are hands-on and they're involved and they want to know more about you. Is that specific to the type of setting, do you think, or is it more to the organization? It's, it's the organization. It's the organization. So you would find like disorder depending, if it's an organization that fosters disorder, then you would find it regardless of what department you're working in? That's true. And I think that it's, it, a lot of it comes from top down, the management. If, if management sees their nurses as just numbers, you're gonna uh, experience that in the work morale and the staff morale, you're going to feel it. Because okay. you're gonna feel like, your voice isn't heard and when you raise certain issues you're either there's you're either reprimanded or, or well not necessarily reprimanded up front but you don't feel like they're, they're, your voice is being heard um, is that common 
I noticed that a lot. Of, it's starting to get better. Uh, there's start people are communicating more now. Um, so there are younger people, fresh fresh minds, people who are more connected and used to uh, being online and and talking to different kinds of people and being open to different opinions. Those type of people are starting to come into management and including me, I'm an open-minded person. So I want to hear your opinions. I want to talk to you and see how I can make your day better. So when you have those kind of people in charge, you're going to have a better staff morale. Not necessarily the, the department, but it's the people. You know, the people. The, the people make a huge difference. So. Does that start with the hiring process? As in like, does the nurse recruiter or the department manager, does it start with them hiring the right people? Or does it start with them trying to build a, bring in anyone and trying to build a culture amongst whoever was brought in? It, again, it's, it's top down. Um, certain hospitals are better than others. Certain clinical organizations are managed better than others. Uh -huh. Some organizations, focus on the bottom line and they will cut down resources for the nurses or they will either like short staff or not pay staff well enough or there's so many things that people organizations that focus on the bottom line do that I find to be counterproductive when it comes to productivity in the clinical setting mm -hmm. and but the ones that are focused on improving their work environment for their staff, for their nurses, they, you know, they spend the money on resources and then they hire, they fo focus on hiring the best. And even if you don't, because you can nec not necessarily, everyone started from somewhere. So even if you hire someone who's inexperienced, if you provide enough cushion for that staff member to uh, grow or f foster their growth, you're gonna get more out of that person than if they feel frustrated the moment they walk into their their job. Right. Okay. So, so it, the, the hiring process, you know, is you you know a lot of people, a lot of nurse grads, they have the same qualifications. They've taken their NCLEX. They have the RN license. They've got their BLS, PALS, ACLS, whatever certification is So necessary. they've checked all the boxes. They've checked all the boxes, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna fit the mold or it might not be a right fit for them in that environment. You've hired nurses before. Mm -hmm. What do you look for in when you're trying to find the right, the, the nurse who is a right fit for the organization that you're hiring for? Um, you know, like I said, it's, it goes beyond the, mm -hmm. All the it's beyond check, the, check, check marks. the check marks and it's all the stuff. Of, and so is it more of like a culture fit? Is what you're looking for? Personality. Like person uh, does this individual have empathy? Does okay. this individual work for a larger goal? Um, do they see their work in their job as an opportunity to impact society or impact their fellow human being, or do they just see it as an opportunity to make money? That makes a difference in the way they approach work. Um, okay. And the other thing is a positive mindset, <laughs> you know, a collaborative or team player. Those come that that comes from me when I have a conversation with the individual. I'm trying to see what they've done that's unique in their life. I try to take the conversation beyond what's on their resume, and I'm talking about. So what's exciting that you've done within the past one year? That's not work related. Because okay. I want to know what kind of person they are, what they do on their spare time, uh -huh. if they have unique hobbies or unique sets of skills. They, are they, I've met people, I've hired people, uh, staff members who are, you know, like church leaders or they're singers at their church or they coach a volleyball team. Um, okay. Things like that. Now mm -hmm. that when if I'm trying to hire a nurse and they tell me that they coach a volleyball volleyball team on on their spare time, that speaks a lot about leadership. That person has leadership character. That person also knows has has patience because to coach a team you have to be very patient. 
and you also have to uh, be willing to see people grow. So those are the intangibles that I look for when I'm hiring. What would be an example of a bad, bad interview? What's the wrong answer for someone to give you? You know, one is tell when when if you're in a if you're looking to get a job, you're a a candidate for a position as a nurse. Uh huh. It's important that you're you've done a little bit of homework and read about about the hospital or the position that you're going for. Uh, it's it's important that you know a little bit, a bit about the organization. Uh, you don't have to know a lot. I also want you to ask me questions because you, I can tell you care. Um, I also, it's also necessary that uh, as a nurse candidate, it's also important that you, you present yourself in an upbeat, positive attitude. You're not talking back bad about your previous positions. You don't have any negative comments about the people you've worked with or your previous relationships. That doesn't right. speak very highly of, it doesn't speak low about the, the, those people, because I don't know who those people are. It speaks about much about, more about you that I'm looking at. It's important for, you, for me to feel that I, I can work with you, you know? Uh -huh. I, we're not gonna be button heads, you know? It's also a chemistry thing, where I have to feel like I can get along with you. Also that you see things in a more positive light than you're focused on things going wrong. You know what I mean? I, right. That's how I feel. It's also important to see that you're solution oriented. Solution oriented, that's right. Okay, have you ever interviewed someone who did terrible? And you were just like, definitely not that person. I can't think of one at the moment, but uh, a lot of times when I don't move forward with a uh, hire, it's, it's because I didn't feel that they where they didn't meet any one of those criteria I just listed, okay. where they were not solution oriented or they spoke negative about any particular situation or the things that they were saying didn't make me feel like they were team players or they weren't, they weren't gonna be a right fit. And I don't want it to come off as a scarlet letter on that individual or that they're you know, bad people or anything right. like that. Just as valuable to the company as the company's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. I should say organization. You're just as valuable to the organization as the organization is valuable to you. It's a okay. mutual relationship. Yeah. So if through the after the interview, um, you don't get the job, don't feel bad. You know, I, I it's important to know that you just, it's just not a right fit. There's a, there's a lot of hospitals. There's a lot of clinical organizations. There's a lot of healthcare organizations that mm -hmm. you can apply to that you will be a better fit for. Um, and I think that's important to drive home because the old way of doing things or in my experience when I was when I applied to look for positions there's always been this hierarch hierarchical type of mentality or this top-down conversation type of deal where whoever is hiring or the management talks down to the nursing staff or make yes. them feel less right uh-huh i don't find that productive in any way yeah we're all co-workers here it doesn't matter what title you have we are all here for the patient and and for the employees as well mm -hmm. if the employees are happy then they will transfer that to their to the care that they provide to the patient so it's important that um to, you know they all nursing candidates or nursing staff it more uh, look beyond how much they're paying you or how much the offer letter has or focus more on well I like to work here <laughs> you know well I like to work with these people right you know does this organization align with my philosophy mm -hmm. that's more important perfect um, I do want to ask you if you have any advice if you have any advice for nursing students who are probably about to start looking for their first job. If you're a nursing student or, and you're, nursing or a new grad or a nurse candidate looking for a position, mm -hmm. in addition to the things that I already mentioned, uh, apply wide and it's also, like I said, it's important to highlight what makes you stand out. What well, okay. 
what are the stellar qualities? What what are the qualities that make you a stellar nurse? Or that what? Why should I hire you? And it has to go beyond what's on your resume, because a lot of people have the same thing that you have on your resume, or even better. Right. So when I speak to you, I have to find something that clicks. Now I also know as someone who's hired a lot, hired you know a lot of people before that. At the beginning of a relationship, it's almost like... Everyone's on their best behavior. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like forecasting. You can't forecast the future. Right. People are their best behavior during interviews. So you're never really going to know whether the person is going to be a right fit until they start working. Mm -hmm. So I've always thought about it like this. Do they meet all the checking points on their resume and the requirement? Can I talk to them? Do they laugh? Do they smile? All right, you're hired. Then if after the third month or so uh, during eval, if you don't meet, uh, if, if, if things are not working out, I'll be quick to let you go because it's good for you and it's good for us because you need to go find where you're a better fit and me, I need to find someone who's going to be a better fit for the organization. Mm -hmm. And it's not a personal thing. It's not, it, again, it's not a, uh, a negative uh, summation on that individual. It's just that I believe in hire fast, fire fast. The hiring process is like a lottery pick. You're not going to know. Hire fast, fire fast. <laughs> <laughs> You're really not going to know. Yeah. So, okay. And that's an insider view of, 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 you know, if you ask me, just uh, so from the nurse's perspective, just get yourself ready and present your best self, you know, mm -hmm. and just, and, um, and hope for the best and just apply, apply wide. Don't ever think any one position is either too high for you to attain, or that's a tough one. I think. Right? Yeah, don't don't ever think that you're too. Sometimes you just, especially when you're new, you have imposter syndrome, and you just feel like mm, I, I'm not ready for that, or that's not me yet. Maybe one day. Or a lot of positions you learn on the job. <laughs> I agree. So I just agree. apply for that position you think you're not going to qualify for. You might be surprised you get picked. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, give your chance, give yourself the add back, give mm -hmm. yourself the opportunity. And if you don't get it, it's okay. Just keep moving. Just keep, keep moving. moving. Apply to the next one and keep going. Um, and I, and just keep moving. It'll work out. Thank you so much. That was so valuable. I think you're going to help out a lot of new nurses coming into the field. It's my pleasure.